There are so-called chelation drugs you can give for acute life-threatening lead poisoning, like if your two-year-old swallows a little lead weight because grandma was sewing curtains, and your doctor happens to miss it on x-ray, and so it sat there until she died with a blood lead level over 200. But for lower-grade chronic lead poisoning, like levels under 45, there was no clear guidance as to whether these chelation drugs were effective, so they were put to the test. And they failed to bring down lead levels long-term, even when they worked initially, and in dose after dose, the lead continued to apparently seep from their bones, and by the end of the year they ended up with the same lead levels as the sugar pill group. So no surprise that even though blood levels dipped at the beginning, no improvements in cognitive function or development could be found. Since much of lead poisoning is preventable, and the drugs don't seem to work in most cases, that just underscores the need to protect children from exposure to lead in the first place. Despite the medical profession's best intentions to do something to help these kids, drug therapy is not the answer. Yeah, we need to redouble efforts to prevent lead poisoning in the first place, but what can we do for the kids who've already been exposed? The currently approved method, these chelating agents, which bind and remove lead from our tissues, lack safety and efficacy when these conventional chelating agents are used. So what about dietary approaches? See, plants produce phytochelatins. All higher plants possess the capacity to synthesize compounds that bind up heavy metals to protect themselves from the harmful effects, so what if we ate the plants. Unlike other forms of treatment, like pharmacotherapy with drugs, nutritional strategies carry the promise of a natural form of therapy that would presumably be cheap and with few or no side effects. Yeah, but would it work? I mean, the drugs didn't. We learned that a meal could considerably cut down on lead absorption, but the particular components of food intake that so dramatically reduced lead absorption was uncertain at the time. The calcium content of the meal appeared to be part of it, but milk didn't seem to help or even made things worse. So how about calcium supplements? There are those that assert calcium supplements may help, but recommendations must be based on evidence rather than conviction. And those assertions are in part based on studies on rodents, and differences in calcium absorption and balance between rats and humans make extrapolation tricky. What you have to do is put it to the test. And even an extra whopping 1,800 mg a day of calcium had no effect on blood lead levels so the evidence does not support calcium supplements helping. What about whole foods? Reviews of dietary strategies to treat lead toxicity say things like eat lots of tomatoes and berries and onions and garlic and grapes as their natural antagonists to lead toxicity, and therefore should be consumed on a regular basis. Remember those phytochelatins? So maybe eating plants might help detoxify the lead in our own bodies, or those we eat. Maybe we could feed tomatoes, berries, onions, garlic, grapes to cows, pigs, chickens, and fish and reduce our lead exposure that way. These natural phytochelatin compounds work so well that we can use them to clean up pollution. For example, chlorella can suck up lead and hold on to it, so what if we ate it? If it can clean up polluted bodies of water, might it clean up our own polluted bodies? We don't know, because all we have are studies like this, of mice, not men. So when you hear about how chlorella is detoxifying, they're talking about the detoxification of rat testicles. So yeah, a little sprinkle of chlorella might help your 
pet rat, or some black cumin seeds, or a sprig of cilantro. But when you hear about how cilantro is detoxifying against heavy metals, I presume you don't expect them to be talking about studies like this. But if we're interested in science and protecting our children, not just their pets, we're out of luck. Same with moringa. Same with tomatoes. And flaxseed oil. And sesame seed oil. Same with black grapes and black, white, green, and red tea. There are simply no human studies to guide us. Dietary strategies for the treatment of lead toxicity are typically just based on studies on rats, mice, rats, 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 rats. But there are some human studies, promising human studies, that I'll explore next.